Hi, so I've got one last video here in this kind of section, which has been all about objects in JavaScript and P5.js and arrays. You know, I've been adding objects when you click the mouse, I've been changing objects when you click the mouse on top of them, I've been checking to see if the objects are overlapping each other, deleting objects from the array, I've been doing all these things. And something that has come up quite a bit uh, in the last week or two that I've heard this question is, okay, well, what if, so this example, this kind of like bubbles example that I'm using over and over again, what if, I, what if you want to display each one of these as an image, an image that you're loading from a file rather than just drawing a circle? And even more so, what if you want each one of these to be a different image and each time you make one, it like picks from a selection of images? So I have this basic example. All it's doing is an empty array. Every time you click the mouse, it pushes an object into it and updates and displays all the objects. So the main thing that I need to do somehow here is first load an image. So I'm going to do this in the first sort of like simple global way in a way, a way that's not going to solve the problem but will get us started. So one thing I'll note is that I do already have, this is the directory of this sketch. Notice there are two JavaScript files because I've moved the bubble constructor function into a separate JavaScript file. If you missed the previous video about how to do that, you can go back and watch that. Um, and then I added a directory called images and I put three flowers in it because I like flowers. Uh, flower zero, flower one, flower two. And I very specifically named them with numbers for a reason, which I'll get to in a little bit. But for right now, let's just say this first pink flower, I want all the images to look like that flower. So, uh, you know, this is, I kind of glossing over a few details here, but to load an image into P5, what you need is first a variable to refer to that image, and then Strangely enough, I'm going to add another event here. So this is a larger discussion about callbacks and the order of things and the browser and how things work. And I, I want to have that conversation in a few videos from now, or really in the next video when I start talking about uh, the P5 DOM library and how you can sort of start handling different kinds of events on the page. But for right now, a simple thing you can do is add this preload function which says, in the preload function, you want to load any media to make sure it's available for the sketch when it really starts in the setup function. So the sketch starts in setup, but now there's this like secret function that you can call before setup. And this is really only for loading images, loading sounds, and later, as you also see, loading data files. So if you're loading a spreadsheet or a big bo bo body of text that you're gonna analyze and visualize, you can also put those kind of things in preload. So here I can say image equals load image, and then in between quotes, I need to put the path of the image, the path relative to this particular project. So again, if I open up, whoops, the finder, when you can see this is the project, my images are in a directory called images. Not at all required, but I'm doing that out of convenience as to not sort of like pollute the, the root directory with a lot of additional files. If I had 100 images, it would sort of be hard to look at. So here I have a separate directory, images, and I can go back to the code and just write images slash flower zero dot JPEG. So the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave the background at zero. So now I have that image variable and where am I displaying the bubbles? In the display function. So all I need to do is go into that display function instead of drawing a circle, draw that image. So here I can say, oops, I left something in here by accident. Instead of drawing a circle, I can comment that out and I can just say image, image, I should have called it flower or something, this dot X, this dot Y. So the image is drawn at the object's XY location. Instead of drawing a circle, draw that image. And the fill and stroke are no longer relevant. I could tint the image and there's other ways to change the image, but that's not really relevant to the discussion here. So now if I run this, you can see that every time I click, I get a flower. Now there's two things to note here. Number one is I get this white border. Images are rectangles. They are rectangles. They are rectangles. They have pixels in columns and rows. They're a rectangle. Now, if, you, if I had been better about this and made this flower image as a PNG file type with transparency, then I could have those pixels around the edge of the flowers be transparent. In this case, I might kind of just use a kind of little bit of a trick here and say background 255. And you know, now it kind of looks right. Now if I put two on top of each other, you can see that that edge is still there. I'll let you, when you make your own flowers, make better flowers than me. But you can see this is kind of important to think about as you're starting to work with images in your sketch. The other thing I'll note here is, notice where I click. Right here, I'm, I can't, right here I'm gonna click, where's the image? I clicked 
in the corner, the image popped up in the corner. So just like a rectangle has its reference point in the top left corner, an image does also. And in this case, I would prefer the reference point to be the center. I don't know why, but I would just prefer that. And so something you can do also with images, just like you could do with rectangles, is say image mode center. So image mode center is a P5 function that now each time I click, you can see an image comes up in the center. So we've got this working through the use of a global variable. So here in the main sketch, I load the image into that global variable, then I access the global variable in the object. But this does not solve our problem. The problem that we have is every time we click, we want to see a different flower image. How do we do that? Each bubble has its own image. Each bubble has its own image. I'll say it one more time. Each bubble has, if I say three times, the code for it appears. It doesn't do that. That would be nice, wouldn't it? I should make a system that does that. So, but the reason why I'm saying each bubble has its own image, the answer that you should be thinking is that means each bubble needs an, an image property. It needs its own variable. It needs its own variable to store an image. So the bubble should store an image. So I don't know what this should be equal to yet, but this is the idea. Somehow the bubble gets its own image and the bubbles own this dot image, not the global variable image, not one image for all bubbles, but each bubble with its own image. That's the big distinction here. Now, of course, the question is, how do we fill that image? So there's a bunch of different ways you could do this, but I'm gonna suggest a way that I think is rather nice for this particular scenario. Notice how the bubble gets its x and y initialized by an arg a parameter that comes in. Function bubble x, y, that x is like a handoff variable. It gets filled and it gets passed to this dot x. The y gets filled and gets passed to this dot y. So what is, what is the bubble's x, y initialized in the code? Here, mouse x, mouse y. So what I would like to do, and I'm gonna change this just to make things make a little more sense, I'm gonna call this flower. So I have one flower image. And what I do is when I make the bubble, I want to send that flower image to the bubble. Make the bubble at mouse x, mouse y with this flower image. Make the bubble at this mouse x, mouse y with the flower image. So this is calling the constructor, mouse x, mouse y, and flower go into bubble.js right here. x, y, and what? Now I need a third parameter image which fills the bubbles this dot image. Now, this is a little bit confusing. Like, I, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, I don't know if I should be doing it this way. I, it's so convenient though. Like, this is called XY image, and this is called XY image. There's a big, huge difference though between this dot X and plain old X. Plain old X is just a parameter for the constructor function to receive a value and pass it to this dot X. This dot X, it's the real deal. It's the variable for that object's X position. So, you could call these like temporary X or temporary Y or handoff X or handoff Y, but it's convenient actually just to call them X, Y image and they get, they get filled and then they pass the, that value into this dot X, this dot Y, this dot image. This is really gonna give you a headache and I apologize for this. I, if I could make all of this just make instant sense, I, I absolutely would. So maybe you have a better, an idea for how to like think about this, but this is one of the more confusing things. But if we take that now, I think if you look at it this way, we get three arguments, mouse x, mouse y, flower, image, and those come into the object. So now, here we go. I've got the same sketch, but I have a much more flexible object. I could initialize that bubble with different flower images. And how might I initialize that bubble with different flower images? How about I have an array? So let's go, whoops, let's go back to here. I never, and the nice thing is I don't have to touch this code again. The bubble is now a generic bubble that can display any image you pass to it. So now I just need a way of passing different images to it right there. Not just this one global flower, but different ones. So what I'm gonna say is flowers equals brackets, and I'm gonna say flowers index zero is flower zero, flowers index one is flower one, I need to change that and flowers index two is flowers two. Look at this, one, two. So now you can see I'm loading three images into an array. Load flower zero into the zero, zero spot, one into the one spot, two into the two spot. Now down here, what could I do? I could say flowers zero. Let's just be crazy and say flowers one. And I run this and you can see, look at that. I'm getting the red flowers. If I say flowers two, oops, I'm getting the yellow flowers, 
And if I say flowers zero, I'm getting the pink flowers. Flowers, flowers, everywhere flowers. So all I need to do is vary that value. Instead of me hard coding in zero or one or two, every time, I don't know, I could pick a random value. I could, or I could cycle through them. Let's cycle through them. I like that idea. Ah, let's pick the random one. <laughs> so if I say var r equals random, what's the range of random values I want? The array has three elements in it, indices zero through two. So I want a random value between zero and three. Better yet, I want a random value between zero and the length of the array. Now, I don't know that I've mentioned this in a previous video, but random will give you a decimal value. So I'm getting 0.457 or 2.361. I want to get rid of that decimal value. And there's a function in P5, which is, comes from JavaScript, called floor. This is a little bit of a digression, but I think it's worth mentioning. If I have the number 3.967, I could floor that number, and it's going to give me the value 3. I could ceiling that number, and it's going to give me the value 4. So floor always takes off the decimal point and goes down to 3. Ceiling takes off the decimal point and goes up to the next number. And there's also round, which whether it's above 3.5 or below 3.5, it'll go to either 3 or 4. So these are kind of important little mathematical helper functions. In this case, I want the floor function because I want this to be a random value in the array. I don't want, I only want to get 0, 1, or 2. So if I put the floor function in there, and now I put r here. Oh, I think I just finished this, uh, except for one step. I can run this, and every time I click, I will get a different flower randomly, right? There's only three flowers in the array, but a random one is passed into every object. I have as many objects as I want, and they'll all refer to one of those uh, images in the array. Now there's one last piece of this that I could improve, which is if you look at the way I did this preload, is it's very hard coded, right? Flowers index 0, flowers index 1, flowers index 2. It would be much nicer if I could say 4 var i equals 0, i is less than 3, i plus plus, flowers index i equals load image something. Now what's the something? What's the something that I put there? So I know I have i counting 0, 1, 2, so somehow I need this text to be dynamic. Images flower 0, images flower 1, images flower 2. It's dynamic as the index in the array. I also want the text to be dynamic. And there's a trick that you can use to do this. So uh, you probably are familiar with this statement. 2 plus 2 equals, say it with me, I know you're just watching somewhere by yourself, maybe you're at the gym on a treadmill, it's weird to just say the number 4, but say the number 4. I don't know, you're probably not at the gym on the treadmill. But somebody once said to me, I watch your videos at the gym, so that's why I said that. Uh, okay, so uh, 2 plus 2 equals 4, right? We're all comfortable with that. But if I have the text like cow plus bell, this equals cow bell. So the plus with text, with characters between quotes, means concatenation or join. So plus with numbers is addition, plus with text is join. So we can use that fact here with a trick. I can say, what do I want to make? I want to say images slash flower, whoops, come back to me, plus i, right? I want to always start images, flower, and then I either want a 0, or 1, or 2, and i is a 0, 1, or 2, and then what do I want after that? Plus uh, dot jpeg. So you can see this is the full string that I want. Flower, a number, and dot jpeg flower plus a number plus dot jpeg. Not add those things together, join those things together. So if I do that, I don't need this anymore. I can get rid of these three lines of code, and here we go. I can now click and add random flowers with different images. Now, of course, up here, like this depends on that you no name the files this way. This only works because I name the files flower 0, flower 1, flower 2. The nice thing is here is I, if I had a thousand flower images, I could put those all in the directory. It would take a while to load a thousand images, but it would work. So this is something I think you can really play with in terms of how you can load a whole bunch of images, pick them either in sequence or randomly. I mean, try the in sequence thing might be interesting and put them uh, and use those objects to display an image. So hopefully this was helpful to you. One thing I would like to say at just at the end of this video is I need to do a much better job of linking to like 
download the code that I'm doing in these examples. If I reference a previous video, I should have a link to that previous video in the description. If you could help me with that, I would be super appreciative of, of it. Uh, so, um, so you can actually just put in the comments like, so first of all, if you're typing the code along and you have it, you can email it to me. Um, but uh, you just like say like the code for this is missing, where can I find it? Or you know what, you referenced this video, here's a link to that video. If you give me those things, I will just like remember to add them uh, to videos. So uh, if you have a chance to help with that, I would certainly appreciate it. And the next set of videos I'm going to make is about how to add things to a P5 sketch that aren't just the canvas. How can you add other types of elements that might appear on a web page, a header, a button, a paragraph of text. How do you manipulate those things with code? So I'm super excited about that topic because it's kind of a new thing for me and I think it'll really expand the possibilities of what you can do with JavaScript and the browser and P5 and all of this stuff. So I will hopefully get to making those videos soon and see you in this way that I see you. I feel that I see you, you are there to me uh, sometime. Okay, goodbye. Uh, I have to hit stop. I'm still here, by the way. I could just stay here, right? This video could just go on and on and just stay here, and, but I'm not, I'm gonna hit stop. Okay, goodbye.